Hi, my name's Thiet. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be discussing the sneak peeks that we've been given regarding the two new hero choices, or two of the new hero choices for the second wave of the Lumineth Realm Lords releases. And both very interesting. I think I've said before that I think it's a bit cheeky bringing out the Realm Lords last year with a brand new battle tome, completely new army, and therefore a complete set of models that makes for a strong and balanced army. And then basically doing the same the very next year. Not just a new battle tome coming out for pre-order this weekend, but a whole range of new models as well. But this is where we are, and these two new heroes do have some incredibly potent abilities. Now, there's a Emetrica hero who looks like providing a steady stream of extra command points and then a double dose of war sages who will provide, uh, I think, a tactical distraction for your opponents. So the war sages first, because they are the most interesting. Another example of the sort of modern model that I really don't like, but I, of course, will be in the minority here. I've said before that I think Games Workshop have now obviously elevated their craft in model design to such heights that it seems that the only thing left to do to push the envelope is by making increasingly dynamic poses and intricate details. Like we had the Bellacore recently with the lots of little chains on it and I just looked at that and went, oh. The problem with intricate and dynamic is it breaks easily. Even just using those models at home for a clumsy oaf like me has its challenges, but transporting them to gaming clubs, nightmare. And then there's tournaments where you've got to unpack and repack quite quickly at the beginning and end of each game respectively. It's quite a rush at the start and the end of a game. And, and you know, that's why largely you won't mess about with the phone packaging as such. You'll, you'll try and have them set out uh, in a big old box, maybe on magnetic boards. But at the same time, it's still fairly rushed in order to get around the event in time. But that's my reaction. That's what I immediately go. I go, ah, oh, that's breaking. <laughs> Drowned out, no doubt, by all the oohs and ahs uh, as another triumph of the Games Workshop's dedication to the craft, which it undoubtedly is. It's why there's no way in hell I'm going to commission a Lumineth Realm Lord's army unless I can find someone local where I can just drive along and pick it up without them wrapping it in bubble wrap. I, I cannot imagine the transport damage uh, would be easy or even possible in some cases to repair. But it's the rules I'm interested in. They provide a serious challenge, I would say, these, uh, there was one model but two heroes, I guess, for your opponent. Obviously, I don't know how many points they're going to be just yet. This is a sneak peek. But their attack line is very decent. But the thing is, it gets better the deeper into the game you go. You know, the damage of their weapon is equal to the battle round number. So in battle round five, they're doing five damage with each of their successful wounds, if they're still alive. And with, you know, four attacks hitting on twos, wounded on threes, minus two rend, that's quite a frightening prospect. And what it does is it invites attention from your opponent who will fear it one shot in an entire unit in the final turns of the game. You know, hide it behind a rock until battle round maybe three. Well, maybe in battle rounds two and three, pick on easy things that where it's low risk for you and then send them out into battle round four or five to do some real damage. Tactically, I think absolutely great in games when you give your opponent two serious threats to divert their resources. A unit like this, if you hold it out of danger for a little bit, becomes something that your opponent may want to take the initiative on and assassinate it early, not wanting to let it get to the point where it's gonna do a lot of damage. In doing so, particularly if you try and hide it a little bit, they may overcommit resources to do so leaving your intended threat against weaker defences. But the Realm Lords player has a decision to make as well. Not only when to commit it, I mean, you wouldn't intend to just leave it until battle round four or five, but also the shooting ability. Now, this deals mortal wounds. Basically, it's a line attack, 12 inch range, only once per battle. So you have, it's not just, you know, you have to use it just once. When's the best time to use it? And uh, it, on a two plus for each unit that this line passes over, it does a number of mortal wounds equal to the battle round. And because it's, as I say, it's a line attack, you want to position them carefully for best effect, probably in battle round three or four. 
Now this takes planning to engineer the best conditions for it. So it's a nice tactical unit, powerful unit, potentially really powerful given the strategic benefits if it turns out to be not too expensive in points. And I wouldn't necessarily anticipate it being excessively expensive. In addition, just to sweeten the prospect, you can take them as allies in any order army. And if you keep them near the general, and in each hero phase on a four up, they generate an extra command point. And again, given that this is a unit you want to keep alive for a few battle rounds, that's probably worth a couple of command points on average. So I'll wait and find out what their points cost is but I suspect it could end up being a bit of a steal for what you get. I think there are just some abilities, it's, it's very difficult to point, you know, to cost. But then we come on to, um, I think a less interesting, but no less tactically useful character, Lyria um, Uthrali, whatever, Warden of Emetrica. Out to be maybe the living replacement for Eltharion perhaps, whom we don't see much of in lists these days is not a pun by the way. Now the good news is that this model looks to be only about moderately above average in terms of vulnerability to being annihilated by transport or general clumsiness. But this guy is even freer with the command points. Put simply, if you don't have Teclis in your army, he's the voice of Tyrion, not, not interested in Teclis shouting over him, but if Teclis isn't in your army and you've got this guy, he gives you an extra command point in each hero phase on the roll of a two up. That's nearly slant levels of good. He doesn't even need to be the general or near the general, just in your army. He also has a lance, which is, well, it looks particularly handy against demons. It, again, it's decent chance to hit and wound and so on. Good damage against chaos demons, it says. It has to have the chaos and the demon keyword. Are there any demons that don't have the chaos keyword? Am I missing something? But anyway, it can also shoot with exactly the same stats. That being said, it's only got one attack. So in balance, it looks, you know, if you look at the end of the line, it looks great, but one attack. But then anything I suppose that would allow the model to increase its numbers of attacks could be useful. It'd be, you know, any spell or, or so on that will give it an extra attack. So when Games Workshop described these two new units as ridiculously good, I mean, they talked about the weapons being ridiculously good. They may not be kidding. Uh, it's just a few days before the pre-orders go out. Then we'll be able to see the War Scrolls, of course. They'll be available on the, uh, on the web store. And then a further week for the Battle Tome release itself with all the rest of their rules, as well as the points values. Along with, of course, all the new super breakable models. But until then, those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And until next time, I'll see you later.